Welcome everyone to Fantasy Foresight, the podcast. We're your hosts and co-founders of FantasyForesight.com. I'm Ben. And I'm Jay. You ready to get rolling, Jay? You know it. Let's do this. All right, let's go. Now let's take a look at the wide receivers in the AFC West as of Saturday, August 11th. First up are the Denver Broncos, and I got to say, I love this group of receivers. I've always been partial to them. You have Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, the dynamic duo, and they finally have a quarterback throwing them the ball this year. Tell me whatever you want about last year. They finally have a competent quarterback throwing them the ball, and I think there's tremendous value in these two. Now, Demarius is going 38 to 40 in drafts. I think he's I think he's a value there, to be honest. He's an extreme value there. I- I love DT at that point in the draft. Love. He hasn't missed a game since 2011. It's he's insane. almost become he's almost becoming an anomaly in the NFL. The the crazy thing about what you just said there is that this man was contemplating retirement due to nagging hip and neck injuries, but he's always gutted through it to the point where he hasn't missed a game in seven years. Apparently, he has hired a personal chef. He's revamped his diet. He's trimmed down. Mm-hmm. He feels pain free and exponentially improved to the point that now he's saying he wants to play as long as Larry Fitzgerald because he feels so great. Uh-huh. I love hearing that. Absolutely. You know, it looks like an arrow up season for, for DT who always has a high floor. And now, like you said, he has a competent, very reliable quarterback. It's the most reliable quarterback he's had since Peyton Manning. Uh, and even Peyton faded a little bit towards the end of that Super Bowl run when they were carried more by the defense. He's total foresight's wide receiver 13. He's Mike Clay's wide receiver 16. I am really excited about DT this year. He's a borderline WR one wr2 with those rankings i think he's right in there i think he's a value like we said he's going right around 38 or 40 that's around the amari cooper tyreek hill larry fitzgerald level they're going right in front of him with juju smith schuster golden tate and jarvis landry going right behind him Uh, that's a great group where you're going to have people targeting some of those names pulling them off the board leaving demarius thomas for you to snatch up and looking like a genius absolutely because demarius brings Brings that perfect combination this year of a high floor, but still with that upside. Because over the last three years, when he's had some of these struggling quarterbacks, he still averaged almost 10 targets per game. Of those 10 targets, he's only getting 70 yards per game. You know, he's getting 0.33 touchdowns per game. So there's an opportunity for all of those numbers to go up. His yards per catch, his yards per target, his target per game, and certainly his touchdowns. Because remember, the last couple years in Denver – when they're going into camp, they're having quarterback competitions. They're not sure who's the leader of the team. And all that does is waste time in camp. Whereas this year, they know who their guy is. All the number one reps are going to the right people, not being divided up. I think this team is a really sneaky good team this year that could make a deep playoff run. Yeah, Vegas has them winning under seven and a half games. I think that they could surprise. I that think, could be a money play right there. I was going to say, I think I'm going to go place a bet on the uh, over on that one thanks Demarius's counterpart Emmanuel Sanders he's back he's healthy he's having fun within the last couple weeks he's quoted as saying as long as I'm touching the ball it keeps me happy so right now I'm touching the ball and having fun out oh there, you so. love to hear that that means he's getting targeted and targeted a lot now he is total foresight's WR32 that puts him in the WR2 to WR3 range right. he's currently going between 70 and 75 in drafts And I think he's a tremendous value there, too. I think both these guys are values where they're going in drafts. I think they've been undervalued because of the situation last year. Yes. And people have somehow forgotten about these two fantasy, and I don't want to call them stars, but they're so reliable. They're, they're, they're like fantasy icons. They've been there forever right. and they've put up points they're and fixtures for teams. Yeah, they're, yes, they're fantasy exactly. fixtures for sure. Perfect. And I think to your point, the reason that Total Foresight has him as wide receiver 32 is because there's been those surrounding and external struggles where the reason that Demarius and that Emmanuel have dropped a little bit in their production has been more a result of the poor quarterback play and the poor situations and circumstances, not so much because they've fallen off or they've lost a step or anything like that. Now, he's going right around Will Fuller, Sammy Watkins, and Julian Edelman. <laughs> Julian Edelman's clearly suspended. Sammy 
has already got an injury <laughs> that we're concerned about. And Will Fuller's coming off injury. So in that group, how do you not trust Manny Sanders? I mean, of that group, I don't want any of those other three guys on my team. I don't trust any of them. I, I love Edelman historically. At this point in his career, coming off the specific type of injury he has come off with the type of cuts that he relies on to be good. He used to be my guy. And if he shows that he's fully healthy and back to his old ways, he'll be my guy again. Sammy Watkins, not so much. Will Fuller absolutely not Manny Sanders is my guy this year and I will I will definitely happily take him above and beyond that 70 to 75 ADP now Denver has yet another possible value lurking Mm. in Cortland Sutton he's a big guy Demarius Thomas was quoted as saying he runs fast and smooth he's explosive he goes and gets it like he's going for a rebound you see him and that jumps at you but I had no idea he could run routes like he does You love hearing that from a guy like Demarius Thomas. Now, he's going as total foresight's WR66 because we don't know what to make of him yet based on projections and his schedule. He's currently being drafted in the 155 to 160 range. Denver took him 40th overall, and they've been needing that true third receiver for years now. They've had decent guys step in. But they aren't guys that are going to step up. Correct. And I think Cortland Sutton could be that guy. And he could be sneaky if for some reason this is the year that Demarius Thomas can't get through a season Mm -hmm. or Manny picks up something and can't get through a season. He is poised to break This is the guy to watch. With his ADP being free, if you are not happy with how your draft has gone and you are late in your draft and you need to throw a a dart on a high upside wide receiver guy, I have zero problem with you going in in the direction of Cortland Sutton. None. Now, another guy who I love to watch is on the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. Tyreek Hill freak is just a, a, a guy to watch. He's a burner. He blows by people. We all saw him waving at defenders last year, backing into the end yep. zone. He is currently going as total foresight's WR17. He's right in the middle of that WR2 range. I think that's where most people value yeah. him. I think I value him a little bit more it, because of his explosive. Yeah, he's dynamic. He jumps off the screen. He's got that lateral quickness. And yes, they brought Sammy Watkins in. And guess what? He's already hurt. I I don't feel like you can count on Sammy. And I really don't think before it's all said and done, he's going to impact Tyreek too much. He's compact. You know, he's got that motor that keeps going. And he's he's he hasn't had any injury problems yet. So listen, from a fantasy perspective, why I like Tyreek so much, every time he touches the ball, he's capable of taking it the distance. We saw that last year when he turned a nothing play into a spectacular highlight. And I want that on my team. He's getting seven and a half total opportunities per game. That's a little low. That needs to, that needs to go up. That needs to go yes. up. But with Sammy already nursing a hip injury, you would think that is sure to go up. He's got Kelsey taking targets, yeah. and he's got Kareem Hunt out of the backfield. Yeah. But he's really the only true wide receiver out Right, and they do have a tough strength of schedule, one of the worst in the league. They've got a middle-of-the-road offensive line. But I love the player. He's dynamic, and he's got a quarterback that supposedly has some insane downfield arm strength. And you know that Tyreek can take the top off defenses, and there could be a lot of big play potential between those two. Mahomes and Tyreek for years to come. Okay, and you just touched on it. He's got a tough strength of schedule. He's got a questionable O line. We touched on that when we talked about Kareem Hunt in our in our hesitation, maybe a little bit of that affecting him. However, for Tyreek, I think that plays into his yes, wheelhouse. They could be behind in games. They could have to try to put up points late. And who else are you going to do that with? Who else are you going to try to find that home run ball with than Tyreek Hill? There's a slew of high value wide receivers in that 33, 37, pretty much all the 30s is just chock full of great wide receiver value this year. And Tyreek yes. is is one of those names, absolutely. And really the group that's going right around him between Fitz, Baldwin, and Diggs, I mean, all those guys are fantastic. Can't go You're wrong. Not gonna go Can't wrong. go wrong. Nope, and Tyreek fits right in. Absolutely. Them. Now, we touched briefly on Sammy. Look, Sammy seems to be one of those polarizing figures in fantasy football. I don't people get it. I don't him. get people it. People love him or hate him. And I will tell you, 
The numbers that I've seen, he lost a step last year. People are going to tell me it's because of injury. I'm going to tell you he's already nursing a hip injury, so I don't know why that's going to change. He couldn't get separation last year, and then I have people argue with me that they're going to put him in the slot, and he's going to be able to run routes and be a serviceable player underneath, which isn't his game. So I don't know why you would invest in him. He's not going to give you 16 games. If he's not on the field in fantasy football, he's worthless to you, and I'm sorry if that's harsh, but it's true. Yeah, I'll tell you this. There are two guys going around him, one above and one below, in his 65 to 70 ADP that I would absolutely love to have on my team more than Sammy. Michael Crabtree is going a little bit higher than Sammy. I would take Michael Crabtree all day. He was a proven wide receiver, too, for the last couple years with the Raiders. Now he's the clear-cut wide receiver one option on the Baltimore Ravens. And and then you got Manny Sanders, Emmanuel Sanders, going a little bit lower than Sammy Watkins. And good Lord. I would run up, sprint up to take Manny Sanders over Sammy Watkins all day. All right, I got to talk about a different receiver. Let's switch gears and go to the Chargers, somebody who's going to be on the field and who's going to give us plays. Keenan Allen, a WR1 for sure. He has total foresights, WR4, Mike Clay's WR5. Like you always say, when you see correlation there, you got to love it. He's only 26. Uh, He proved last year that his previously injury-riddled career in his first four seasons were more bad luck than anything. Yeah. We all know he was 2017's PPR WR3 overall and WR4 in fantasy points. But I bet you there's something that you didn't know about this guy. What's that? Last year, he was the first ever in NFL history at the wide receiver position to have at least 10 receptions, 100 yards, and one touchdown in three straight games. That has never been done before in NFL history. That is shocking to me. Right? I mean, just the fact that it's never happened before is shocking. It doesn't seem like it's that unattainable, but it hasn't. And he's the only one that's done it. And yes, they have a tough strength of schedule, one of the worst in the league. Yes, they have a middle-of-the-road offensive line. I think they're going to pass a ton. Him and Phillip Rivers have great chemistry, a great connection. He's going around 16 to 18 in drafts. And I am very happy to get Keenan Allen anywhere as my wide receiver one at that point in the draft. Yeah, Yeah, we always bring this back to value. And the other guys going around him are Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, and OBJ. And I got to say, Keenan Allen, I probably prefer to at least two out of those three. I like Michael Thomas, but I'm not sure he has quite the upside Keenan Allen does. Uh, Agreed. I mean, Michael Thomas could definitely take a step this year, and a lot of people think that. And I like Michael Thomas, and I know you definitely do being a Buckeye fan. You know, with Julio's peaks and valleys, I'll take Keenan Allen over him all day. Odell, amazing. Love him. He's a little bit of a head case. You know, he's coming off the injury. We're not super sure, not super sure about that team. Again, at that point in the draft, I always feel like I would rather target what makes me feel the most comfortable. And you don't have to sacrifice any upside with Keenan Allen whatsoever. Now, a guy who we've been waiting for his upside on is Mike Williams. As a rookie last year, he picked up an injury in the preseason. He got off to a slow start. Mm -hmm. Thursday, August 9th, uh, he was quoted as saying, I've got a big role in the red zone right now, so you love hearing that, but I'm waiting to see this talent come through. Yes, agreed. He hasn't proven anything to us yet. He is he is our wide receiver 136, and that's appropriate. He has done nothing. You know, he's going in 120 to 125 range in drafts right now over the past month in PPR format. That was a lot lower before Hunter Henry got hurt. And he could see an uptick in red zone volume. He does have that big frame. He did have a productive college career. When you're, when you're talking about that point in the draft at 120 to 125, if you're looking at the wide receiver position, you really want to target upside. The guys that are going around him, Cam Meredith, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore. I don't know that I would pick Mike Williams over uh, two or th- well, maybe even all three of those guys, um, but there is some upside there. And if he falls to me and I want a high upside wide receiver in one of the last picks of my draft, I have no problem going Mike Williams, but there are other options that I would prefer. Yeah, I, in that range, I like Cameron Meredith, although he's coming off injury. He's in a dynamic offense. I, I like the potential there, even though I, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. 
yep. yet. Mike Williams, I, I feel like they're almost the same. Um, they're right in that range. You have some question marks about production. I think they're adequately valued right there. I, I think that's a good spot for them, and that's and that's that's just going to be a preference point at that. Right, point. and m- when you look at the other Williams on that team, Tyrell, you know, he's somebody that I would prefer a lot more. He's going pretty much free at 160 to 165, much later than Mike Williams. And he's got a proven history of being somewhat of a playmaker. I've always liked Tyrell, and I don't know if he's ever gotten his due, but I have always found that he is a great end-of-draft roster You're filler. Right. He's a competent bench mm-hmm. player. He'll give you points when he plays, and he's capable of putting up touchdowns. The numbers supported that last year as he was wide receiver 49 in PPR league, so that puts him on the flex radar. Right, exactly. I mean, I think he's a decent play. He's great depth. I would love for him to be more and take a step forward. I think he's poised to do that, ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler alert out there. He's listed as the starter on the depth chart opposite Keenan Allen. Everybody's paying attention to Mike Williams and Travis Benjamin. Everybody's ignoring Tyrell. Take note, people. That's the value wide receiver on this team. Jay's absolutely right. Tyrell Williams is your guy late in drafts that you want to target. Travis Benjamin, burner, Mike Williams, potential. I like Tyrell Williams out of that group the most, and it's not close. I completely agree with everything you just said. Boom. Moving on to yes. Oakland. Now here's We don't agree Oakland. here. <laughs> we don't agree here at all. We've got an interesting situation here. You've got a different group. Mm-hmm. Michael Crabtree out. Mm-hmm. Jordy Nelson in. Now you've got a group of Amari Cooper, Jordy Nelson, and Martavis Bryant. Right. Interesting group here. You've got Amari Cooper who's been struggling. Yeah, tell us about the Amari Cooper concerns. Go ahead. He's had a case of the dropsies. I think he's notoriously known for that. I don't know if you want to touch on some of that. Well, okay, you're you're right. That is undeniable, okay? Back in February, our guy Derek Carr went to bat for his teammate. He said about Amari Cooper, and I quote, he would never say this to you, but I'll say it to have his back. That man was out there giving anything he could, and honestly, a lot of guys probably wouldn't have played with what he had. I believe Derek Carr. I don't think he has any reason to go out and make that up or fabricate that whatsoever. And and Amari Cooper is now bulked up. Amari Cooper has a lot more muscle this year. Amari Cooper's on the record saying he feels great. And okay. and I think he's in line for a ton of targets. And at the wide receiver position, nothing correlates more to fantasy points than targets. He's going 33 to 38 in drafts. I think that is a, a fine value for who Total Foresight and Mike Clay have as combined. We have him as wide receiver 25. Mike Clay has him as wide receiver 21. I think he definitely can exceed both of those numbers this year and that he will be a solid wide receiver two or better. Was his affliction last season stone hands? No, they weren't. Is there a cure for that? I'm just curious. We will. Is that di- you, is that difficult to play? You with? are more than welcome to go the Juju Smith Golden Tate route. You know, at that point, feel free. I, but other guys like Tyreek Hill, Larry Fitzgerald, and Doug Baldwin are going right around him too. And I would take all three of those guys over him for they're sure. They're all going higher than him for a reason. And I agree with you that I would take those guys over him as well. You know what, Doug Baldwin? T- Doug okay. would ba- Doug Baldwin's a little. I want to know more about that injury first. I love Doug Baldwin, okay. but I want to know more about that injury. Larry Fitzgerald, you got a little bit of questions there. You, you, I'm more, I'm higher on Larry than you that's are. That's true. Okay. And, okay. Then I just think Coop's in line for a ton of targets this year. Gruden will not stop raving about this guy and will not stop talking about how their passing game is going through this guy. And we, we loved Coop coming out. We did. I don't think all of a sudden that he just sucks. And I don't think all of a sudden that he forgot how to catch the football last year. I'm going to go ahead and believe his quarterback and think that maybe he, this guy was just gutting it out through a lot of tough injuries. And now that he's right, maybe he can look a little bit more like he did before all this happened last okay, year. Okay, I hear what you're saying, but you think he's just going to skate through the season completely unfazed and not pick up any minor injuries or any nagging injuries. And if that happens, is he all of a sudden going to forget how to catch the ball because he's too focused on an ankle or a shoulder? I, I can't 
guarantee that. All I know is in life, you control what you can control. Okay. He went out and bulked up so he could try to control that a little bit better. And all I'm saying is I I think that last year he was overvalued. I think this year he's a little undervalued. And what I can control is the fact that Demarius Thomas and Golden Tate are going right behind him, and I'm going to take one of those two over him. Well, I mean, I will take Demarius Thomas. It is a big time toss up for me with Coop and, and uh, Golden Tate. So, you know, I, we'll just suffice to say I'm higher on Coop than you are. We can agree to disagree on that. And maybe like a lot of other podcasts out there, this is going to lead to some sort of foresight bet <laughs> segment of some sort coming up soon. All right. Now let's talk to the next guy who I think we both have probably some uh, interesting takes on. And that's Jordy Nelson. Fell off last year with the Aaron Rodgers injury. I know that all too well. He is total foresight's WR29. He's barely registering other places. He's a WR3, WR4 in a lot of rankings. Like you said, they have a difficult strength of schedule, but they do have a good O-line. They're projected to be a pretty decent team this year. You have Amari Cooper, like you said, back and healthy. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be a situation where Jordy Nelson can come back and get back to what he was? Well, let's be honest about a couple of things. One, Jordy Nelson's 32 years old. Two, he realized a lot of his fantasy success in tandem with Aaron Rodgers. You know, I love me some Derek Carr. He's not Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and in, in Jordy had 0.7 touchdowns per game over the past three seasons. So a lot of touchdown dependency there off of only eight targets a game. Okay. But I think, I think you kind of touched on my concern and maybe you're going here. Watching Jordy over the last several seasons, a lot of his success was he and Aaron Rodgers having the relationship where they made reads and adjustments on the fly yes. and he got open. Now, yeah. when, when Rodgers went down last year, he had trouble separating from defensive backs you're right and with an inexperienced quarterback he couldn't get the ball so yes Derek Carr is a better quarterback than what they had last year but is he going to be able to get separation get open and get the ball I think he will because Gruden's talked about having a speedometer at practice and he's touched on Jordy Nelson has not lost a step whatsoever and he's got the clock to prove it you also take that look at Larry Fitzgerald a few years ago, he lost a step. What'd he do? He moved to the slot. What's happened since then? He's still been extremely fantasy relevant as a rock-solid wide receiver one last year. If Jordy Nelson has not lost a step, if Jordy Nelson is fully healthy, and now that Jordy Nelson is moving into the slot, there is potential for him to have a Larry Fitzgerald-like renaissance, and he's going 90 to 95, okay? Okay. There, there are guys at that point that I like more than Jordy. I agree. But if you're in a league and the guys that, that you do like more around him got snatched up in front of you, I have no issue. I'm not going to beat anybody up for taking Jordy Nelson in the 90s. The upside is there and the track record is there. Why did he have a lot of his success? A lot of it was big time chemistry and familiarity and comfortability with Aaron Rodgers that he will not have now. He also was the number one guy there. Coop is the number one guy here. Martavis Bryant's going to be on the opposite side of Coop on the outside. And that leaves Jordy in the slot. So I can see a path for Jordy Nelson to have a surprising rebound type of season this year. He had less than 500 yards receiving last year. That is not who Jordy Nelson is. I think we can all agree on that. The guys going around him are all kind of in a similar group where there are major question marks yeah. about what some major their value is going to be though. this year. There is some major value. Robbie Anderson, question mark, but major value with the upside there. Jeremiah Crowder, major upside there. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, major upside. Guys like Devin Funches, Parker, not so much. Oh, I know. There's there's lots of guys. They're all kind of in a similar group. You have some guys coming off injuries, some guys with maybe quarterback questions. They, they all have some type of variable that's making you question what their fantasy value is going to be this year. But for me... I... Jordy Nelson out of that group, I'm just not sure I'm going to be the one taking the chance on him this year. I'd rather wait and see what it is he's going to become. Sure, and I agree. I think I think with the other guys there, I'm probably going to go in a two or three other different directions than Jordy, but that is the average of where he's going. If you are in a league where he drops another 10 or 20, the value really starts to become eye-opening there. Right. So The last guy on that roster that we'll touch on is Martavis Bryant. Sure. Um, he is going undrafted. He's unranked. Man, this guy, I'll tell you what, though, just last night, preseason debut, 
He only had one catch for 18 yards on four targets, but his natural and effortless speed was apparent, especially on what should have been a 70 yard touchdown where he was wide open on a pass that was, that was very underthrown. So if, if this guy can get rid of the attitude stuff and the locker room issues and all the stuff that ailed him off the field, those are big ifs. I'm with you. But there is a lot of value there, especially when you consider he's going 145 to 150, which is almost free. Okay. There are guys that we've talked about where I question whether or not they can make it 16 games in a season without picking up an injury. Martavis Bryant, I question whether or not he can make it 16 games in a season without seriously butting heads with John Gruden. <laughs> How are those two going to coexist over the course of an entire season? And let's say and let's say they lose games. Dude, you know what? I, I got to give it to you. I got to give it to you. That is an angle that I didn't consider whatsoever. That's hilarious. And I wish there was some sort of – I love that Hard Knocks is in Cleveland this year. But good Lord, I would love to see some behind-the-scenes interaction between Martavis and Gruden. That would be priceless. I completely agree, though. He is an exciting player. I just don't know. He Again, he's going to be a guy – I know we've said it before. He's, he's going to be a guy that I'm just going to have to wait and see to see how fantasy relevant he's going to be. He's got Kenny Galladay, who I'm high on in Detroit, sure. and Lockett in Seattle going right around him. I and love I Lockett. Love the value of those yeah, guys. I know. Yeah, Tyler I know. Lockett is, he could be a sneaky play, and we'll get to him later in a future episode, but those guys, the value there. I think far exceeds that of Martavis. I agree. But when you get later in your draft, you run a much higher likelihood of guys that you want not being there, obviously. So if guys like Galladay and Lockett are gone, I will take Martavis over Mr. Dotson. I will take Martavis over Danny Amendola. I will take Martavis over John Ross. For sure. Gallup, you know, I'm not sure about, but... Marte, you could do a lot worse in the upside department in the 140s, 150s of your draft in PPR formats than Martavis Bryant. And that wraps up this episode of Fantasy Foresight, the podcast. Don't forget, you can find us at FantasyForesight.com. And you can use the links at the bottom of the page to find us on social media. Follow us on Twitter, at ForesightBen, at ForesightJ, and at Total Foresight. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You already found this podcast, but you can find it on Google Play and iTunes, and you can find our app in the App Store. All right, that does it for us. We'll see everybody next time. Thanks a lot, and have a great night.